that was a great introduction thank you so much hello audience thank you all for joining today i'm going to walk you through airflow on kubernetes have you ever tried using airflow are you familiar with kubernetes we are going to look at both today and i hope you learn a lot so to start with i'm going to tell you my airflow story so i was i am a research engineer at sama and you we use machine learning slash deep learning for our data for our data pipelines so we it, we have the pride of incorporating machine learning algorithms into our products and as a result of it we have a ton of back end work to do and on all of those airflow plays a major part because you know when it comes to data data pipelining is also an incredible part to start with uh in this talk we are going to talk about we're going to see oh, what is airflow uh, why should you even use airflow and how to use it and what are the perks of using kubernetes along with it and pros and cons of both so let me give you a uh, understanding of how airflow came about it initially when uh, automation was a thing there was one task which would run at every 2 hours or at a particular time and then uh, cron was enough for that but human beings got greedy and there was more tasks and as there were more tasks it had to be managed monitored and nobody had a clue on how to manage crons and it got hectic and that's when task became workflows it was not just one task running at a particular time it was a series of task intertwined with each other and we need some way to manage it workflows are everywhere for example when you sign in for iwd today you might have got a uh, confirmation message that's just one example of a workflow i'll show you another that we use at sama whenever a new data comes in we need to train our existing machine learning model that's in the production and then test it on the fly and then push it to production because the new data has rich is of rich of information that needs to be incorporated into the system as soon as possible so that's where airflow plays a major role so airflow is an open source python tool used to create monitor and manage your data pipelines also called as workflows why should you even use it one it's python -y. python has a major a major role in machine learning and also Uh, having a same stack to, uh, throughout uh, gives us a lot of advantage second thing is it's highly distributed which we'll see on the kubernetes component and it's very clean way of doing it and it's also highly customizable since it's python all you have to do is extend it and uh, write whatever you want and how do we do it it has a, uh, something called as a dag a directed acyclic graph and each node on that graph is a task i'll show you an example For example, this is a, a classic DAG. The whole thing is a graph, and each node is a task that you have to run. Uh, you can have branching. You can have conditions that define which task to execute at what time. Before I know you're all excited for Kubernetes and how to incorporate that, but before that, for people who don't know Airflow, who haven't tried it before, I, I'll walk you through the basics of Airflow, some concepts, and what are the components involved. So you have two major components one is the dag that we have already seen a graph and each graph has a bunch of nodes each one of these we call as tasks and these tasks are nothing but a code uh, what we call as an operator there is a python operator there is a bash operator uh, there is something to connect to s3 and there are some sensors so a python operator can call a python function a bash operator can call a bash script this is a typical example that we will see in the a uh, demo so once we have these two configurations in every time a task is run an instance of that is created a copy which is also time stamped so that you will be able to monitor it so we have covered three things which you have to remember one is the dag second is the task third is the task instance next how does airflow work what are the components involved So it has three major components. One is the web server, which is the UI that Airflow provides. Second is the scheduler, which uh, which goes through the task every once in a while and schedules them for the workers to take it up and run it. And there is also one more component that you need to be aware of. 
that is the executors so executors are nothing but the uh, the code that takes the once the scheduler schedules a task executors take them up and schedules uh, and hands it over to the workers so you have three options when it comes to airflow one is to run it on the same machine as everything else is running second thing is to use celery which is another python uh, tool to schedule tasks third is a uh, kubernetes that is what we are going to focus on today airflow with kubernetes the ideology for this is every task run in its own pod why why should we even consider kubernetes because celery is a good enough option and you can run celery on kubernetes as well i'll tell you why in celery the worker pods that we talked about you have to uh, give a particular number for example you can say i'll have five workers running i'll have three workers running and you have to have them running all the time that is not a good idea but with kubernetes it becomes highly distributed doesn't matter you have 100 tasks or 50 tasks you can spin up pods as much as you want and each pod will take care of running each tasks and if they are branched you can say uh, that pods are triggered in that order second thing this is the best and the most interesting uh, advantage of using kubernetes you can allocate the required resources for each task for example some task might be memory intensive some task might be cpu intensive you can figure out which needs what and allocate exactly that airflow provides you fine grain control over what kind of task need what kind of resources and it's highly scalable obviously because we have kubernetes in place you can spin up multiple nodes uh, expand the resources and you can have as many number of pods you want running based on the configuration of the machine so i think i have sold you enough on why should you use kubernetes with airflow let's see how that works so i know this image is a bit scary but it's not a big deal all you have is a kubernetes cluster and you have a terminal where you build your docker image and push it to a repository once you have the image in place that's like your basic configuration all your web server scheduler and your worker run on individual pods so here we have our web server here is our scheduler and the scheduler has the whole responsibility of spinning these worker pods and there is also a kubernetes service which will expose these uh, ui to a external world and we also have a backup which is a postgres sql which kind of has uh, controls all the tasks required so let's deploy i think we have talked enough so first we have talked about the docker image a sample docker file will look something like this it, it it's nothing scary it's just a docker configuration let's say uh, you have you have to have uh, airflow installed and then you need postgres and kubernetes there is also mysql you can try that as well and you have to have these dag python files which you have to copy to a particular location once that is done it's all about configuring configuring your uh, kubernetes pods here is the sample worker pod that i have been using uh, it has a container which which runs the web server and you have to give the docker image over here uh, you can as well change this to work with scheduler so the same configuration goes for scheduler and the worker configuration are given on your airflow config file so airflow.cfg is an airflow config file that comes along with airflow and you need to set up what your worker configurations are over here so here you again give what image you want to pull and what are the configuration maps if there is anything that you want to configure for your workers this is where those goes and it has bunch of other settings also you can check them out a sample dag would look something like this ha finally so this is a sample i am using for example uh, let's say you are uh, tracking a twitter sentiment analysis for different people you choose 5 to 10 twitter accounts and you create a machine learning model and you want this model to be ran for different people at different time uh, for example as and when they tweet you want to have them have this machine learning model uh, pull those tweets and do the sentiment analysis that is something that uh it's been going on here so here is my list of people list and i have a uh, for loop and I, this for loop is going to define one task per user so here i use a python operator and it will run for particular person 
let's see a demo and you will understand all of this better. So this is the Airflow UI I was talking about. Here you have list of all the DAGs that's been generated. And each DAG will have this beautiful graph view. So these are the graph view and you have this tree view. So here the DAG has the only control over all these tasks. It's, these are not dependent. And on the right, you see the task instance I was talking about. This is the copy and it has the timestamp of when it was run, how it was, whether it's a success or a failure of that sort. So let's see how it's uh, been deployed in Kubernetes. So here I have two pods running. One is the airflow pod, another is a Postgres pod. So one has all the components of Airflow, except for the scheduler. Uh, let's go into this pod and see what's there. So this is the root folder for our, all our Airflow configuration. So like you see, here is our configuration file. Here is the DAG, here is the logs, and a bunch of other things that Airflow uses. So let's see what's there in Airflow config. So here we need to define under executor, it's a Kubernetes executor. And then there is a whole section for Kubernetes where you define where you define all the configuration that has shown before. So whether you need to use the config or any workers, how, what is the namespace, whether DAGs are within the image, you also have an option for pulling the DAGs from a GitHub repository. That comes very handy when you have your data pipeline writers different from the DevOps people. So similarly, where the DAGs are being stored and all those information goes here. And, and inside your DAGs is where all the DAGs that we have seen over the UI stays here. This is the example that I've just shown you. So here we have the DAG, and for each person, I'm going to run it through a Python loop and then uh, put it, create a task, and that is what we are seeing on the UI. Let's see how to how to run this task. So here we have all the tasks ready, and it has run perfectly a few times before. Uh, so as I said, the thing here is for every task we will have one pod running. So let's see if that happens. Watch. And for every task that's there on the UI, we need to have one pod running. So I'm going to trigger a task right now. And of course, if you have a timestamp attached to it, if you have a schedule attached to it, then it will run at the particular type. For me to simulate it, I'm just creating it right now. So like now, you can see it has been triggering one pod for each task. I know it looks like a lot. If you are not seeing Kubernetes before, it's really like that many number of tasks for one, two, three, four, five, and all of them are running. After a couple of minutes, all of them will shut down because it has done its task. So now you can see uh, one, two has gone off. The rest of the pods are shutting off again. Now every all the tasks are complete, and let's see if that has been updated in our UI. So once you refresh, you see that all the task has been successfully completed and you get a green thing here. And you also have this view log where you can go and monitor what happened, why the task has failed, why it has been succeeded, and all of those information. Right now, I don't have much here. So it just says that it has run the task perfectly well. So that was how Airflow works. Moving on, there are some gotchas. Uh, I've been working on Airflow for quite some time, and this is highly opinionated. I feel that these things has to be changed for a better experience. So first one is documentation. I like, I've been very uh, attached to very extensive documentation, ex especially for newbies to get started with. And Airflow's documentation is to the point, and it can elaborate a lot. So there is a lot of room for it in open source world. Worker bots. I, as I said, uh, Airflow gives you fine-grained control over the worker parts, but it's not exactly fine-grained. 
because it does it kind of abstracts the worker pods and creates a layer on top of that so you can't really go go for the kubernetes level configuration but only to the level that airflow exposes but this is changing in airflow 2.0 which is going to be released somewhere in next year this is changing and they are going to give you very fine grained access like you can give a yaml file and it will generate the pod from there so that is an exciting feature to look forward to third thing is dynamic uh, runtime dynamic workflows i talked about dynamic workflows what is runtime dynamic let's say the number of users are not defined on the program rather it comes from the previous task then you have to do some magic use there is a concept called subtags and you have to intertwine multiple subtags to achieve runtime dynamic workflows i'll be writing a blog about this you can look forward to that scaling schedulers we talked a lot about scaling workers because the workers run as an independent entity it's easy to scale and manage them but when it comes to the scheduler the core part of airflow uh, scaling them is still a nightmare when you have two schedulers running how are they going to interact with each other and ensure that the same task is not going to run multiple times there are ways to do it just that it's not a very straightforward or easy way for a devops engineer but still airflow is pythoning it's user friendly it's flexible it's uh, distributed and highly scalable and that's what makes us stick with airflow if you have any questions you can reach out to me on all the social pl uh, platforms listed in bhavaniravi.com i hope you uh, learned a lot in this session thank you so much for joining and i'm open for questions in ama also so shoot them forward